Thank you for joining me, Professor Vaso Teleski, a professor at Gose okay. del Sev University of Stip in North Macedonia. And obviously you're our FEMS Director for Events and Internationalization. Thank you for taking the time in your busy schedule to join me for an interview today. I would like to thank you for your kind introduction and to say that I always enjoy talking with you, especially when we have uh, interviews. Yeah, it's great fun. And this it's is my you're, third You're a great professional for this job. Oh, thank you. So I best start us off with my first question. So I wanted you to tell us a bit about your commitment to FEMS. I mean, I've introduced you as our Director for Events and Internationalization, but what does that involve? And what accomplishments for FEMS and the FEMS community are you most proud of in your role? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, I am uh, devoted to FEMS for almost 28 years. As a young microbiologist, I became a president of Macedonian Microbiological Societies in the term 1993-1997. And my first big success was to join my society to FEMS. After presidency, I became a delegate in FEMS and I was very active delegate. So uh, I devoted past years completely to FEMS, to its mission, activities, development, visibility. And uh, can you believe that uh, I never missed any Council meeting, which is annual meeting of FEMS delegates. I believe that I was 100% uh, attended. participated at 25 council meetings, and in this respect, I am the oldest member of FEMS. I had a chance uh, and possibility to be a FEMS uh, grant secretary for seven years, and uh, I shadow, I took a position of two FEMS officers before that, uh, and in that time, only two type of types of grants existed. But uh, when I became Grand Secretary, um, the strategy of the FEMS board was uh, to develop this grant scheme and we end up with eight various types of grants for different categories. So I'm so proud about this because uh, during these years, FEMS has supported over 1,000 early career scientists to conduct their research short-term research up to three months and we were supported over 100 microbiology events like symposia mm -hmm. congress conferences summer schools so thousands of people attended and get direct help for from fans to accomplish their wishes and to join some meeting and to introduce themselves to make new friendships and collaborations as a delegate, I was a member of uh, one uh, group named Terra Nova, and uh, I was responsible because uh, I forced the most to why my question was why FEMS has no its own Congress. And then I made this pilot study, which was uh, accepted uh, by the executive committee of FEMS, and we developed further and uh, we start organizing a serial of Congresses and uh, as everybody knows who is uh, familiar with FAMS activities, with eight extremely successful congresses, next one will be in 2021. And we have plans for the forthcoming after that congress. I was uh, a member of the organizing committee of all congresses and the uh, chairperson of Congress Grants Committee for seven FAMS congresses. I'm very happy that uh, we supported also almost 2,000 young scientists to attend FEMS congresses because FEMS invested in science, in young scientists, and it was tradition for FEMS to support about uh, in approximately 200 young scientists with a budget of 100,000 euros. Mm. And for the next congress, it will be double, 200,000 euros. But unfortunately, we will not have probably, most probably, face-to-face -face, uh, Congress and to use this uh, budget. But for the forthcoming, this is a huge help of FEMS to young scientists. And one day we will meet in person. So eventually, hopefully, we can use Maybe 2021, yeah. not, but the next one. Yeah. I also participate as an initiator to develop FEMS declaration on microbiology. This is a fantastic document. Maybe it is time 
to some adjust to the current situation in the world. In uh, as you mentioned in uh, 2017, I was uh, elected for the position Fence Director of Internationalization and uh, re-elected for the same position in 2022 for events and internationalization. So I am very happy and proud that uh, in a short time uh, with the support of the board of directors and uh, with the support of the staff from the FEMS Central Office, uh, we accomplished to from idea to realization to make live some visions that I had. We start uh, organizing FEMS summer school for postdocs. I will tell something a bit later. Then FEMS uh, network of uh, ambassadors and the organization of a conferences of this type as we are now present mm. unfortunately online yeah. so i contribute a lot uh, to spreading of fans vision and mission in europe and uh, worldwide but fans enable me enable me and i'm very grateful for that to realize these noble visions and projects mm. so helping the young scientists and funding meetings and yeah organizing events to bring scientists from around the world together are kind of i guess what fems does and what you're most proud of so i mean uh, an example of one of those meetings is of course this conference so i was wondering as the main you know as the chair of the organizing committee um and you know starting from a conference that was going to be in belgrade and then transitioning to an online conference in just a few months it must have been a lot of work so can you tell me a little bit about what it was like behind the scenes and how it was to organize this conference, you know, had to really sort of change tack really fast to deal with new systems in this in this ongoing pandemic. So how was that? I may say that uh, maybe the, the main goal of HAMS is to connect people on the first line to connect microbiologists and microbiology. When HAMS board of directors approved this project, we start working with a great enthusiasm and everything was prepared in uh, about uh, one year or year and a half for the first FEMS conference on microbiology 2020. We prepared a great program and great speakers and also fantastic venue brand new Hotel Hilton in the center of Belgrade mm. and Belgrade is a beautiful city and but unfortunately COVID-19 pandemic was faster than us and what happened so although when it started in some more difficult situation in February March I was uh, very optimistic that uh, by May or beginning of June, everything will stop by start of the summer, but this didn't happen. So in France, we had uh, organized a FAMS emergency task group, taking care of everything, follow all events, situation, and uh, in the first place to take care of the safety of the FAMS community. And we decided that uh, we should cancel uh, most of the events and uh, about this conference about some discussion we decided first to question to que to make a question to the speakers what is and the scientific committee what they think about to go online and the feedback was fantastic all accepted to be part of this uh, conference and then we decided to go online but we needed some more time instead of uh, july we decided to have this conference on this October with the hope that the pandemic will be behind us and we could help maybe if not completely conference face to face and live, but maybe to have a hybrid conference. Mm. For example, I intended to be in Belgrade at, at least now during the conference, but I, because of the worsening the situation, I couldn't go. So are you in North Macedonia at the moment then? Are you? Uh... Um, Yes, I'm in North Macedonia at home, but you see FEMS is with me. Yeah, absolutely. FEMS is everywhere. So, FEMS lives in the cloud. So we, we are completely in a new new field, new zone. Everything is new, new experience for all of us, for FEMS, for staff of FEMS, for organizers, for hosts, for 
everyone. And uh, this is uh, the, so I will say a little bit more about this. Uh, uh, maybe I cannot say at the moment uh, what I feel about uh, organizing online conferences, but I know that it looks like uh, more complicated than uh, organize a live conference. Mm. And uh, probably we will need some time uh, when everything finished to summarize all advantages and adva disadvantages. But I would say that my preferences were and will be always to have online face-to-face -face meeting. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to point out that hopefully we will return to Belgrade in 2022. Is that correct? So that, that we should get to make use of this wonderful um, venue and hopefully do, you know, the in-person conference in Serbia as planned later down the line. But for now, we at least get to have a conference, which is better than no conference. Um, and I just wanted to ask, for me, this is my first online conference, for you perhaps the same, um, but for many scientists joining, perhaps presenting their first posters, it might be their first conference at all. So um, I just wanted to ask, yeah, what advice do you have for young scientists at their first conference? And what can you, what kind of wisdom can you give to them in your, from your position as a senior scientist? For young scientists, uh, I will repeat that I'm sorry that this is online conference, but uh, we will learn from this. Uh, we will get uh, some lectures and uh, we will know how to behave and to be prepared for any kind of situation in life, not only for conferences. Mm. I would say to them that this is the best, best period of their lives. They are young, they are healthy, they are ambitious, they have a lot of energy, they have their own dreams. I would suggest them to follow their dreams. And doesn't matter are they small or big dreams. If you have small dreams, you will easily come to a big dream and never be disappointed. But uh, you should always be committed to the science. If you take this way of your life, committed to science, to love what you work, to fight for truth in the science. Talking about microorganisms, try to be friends with them, to live in harmony, but never underestimated microorganism, microorganisms. And uh, always collaboration with uh, your fellow fellows, young scientists and senior scientists uh, will lead you to the best success. And uh, as a FEMS officer for many years that uh, I know all advantages and possibilities you can get from FEMS, I would suggest you always to follow what is on the FEMS uh, website to join as a FEMS affiliates and to join as a member of the your local society because through your societies you are a part of the big FEMS family who is always there for you to support your needs. Mm. So I mean I've asked a few different people you know what are the pros and cons of a of a virtual conference like this and I I've heard lots of big lists of cons you know it's hard to talk to people but I think there are also some pros and one of the things I think it's good to highlight is that with a virtual conference it's a lot cheaper for young scientists who are all over the world to attend and it's more accessible perhaps to people who can't travel or can't afford hotels so hopefully in the future even if we have in-person conferences perhaps we can do a kind of hybrid maybe so that people who can't travel can also access the science so you know, I've had lots of scientists moan at me about how difficult online conferences are but I think there are also some pros and we'll get used to aspects of this as we as we get used to this whole format you are, you are completely right about this if we're talking about costs costs are much lower for everyone mm. benefits for in some terms can be much higher than expected and uh, I believe that uh, the future will be probably most probably hybrid hybrid conferences for those who cannot afford to join some uh, meetings from different uh, reasons, they can join online. Hmm. So hopefully we can get good at this format and uh, get more and more people involved in microbiology. 
And actually, this brings me on to my next question, um, which was, yeah, you know, how and why did you become a microbiologist? I've talked to people, sometimes they say, oh, it was by accident. I was interested in genetics and bacteria were easy. But, but what was your story? Everyone has an interesting story. My story is uh, also interesting, at least for me. Uh, believe or not, I'm a medical doctor. Mm. And I used to work as a general practitioner for almost five years. I work with people and uh, I enjoy my, my job. When the time for specialization came, I was offered uh, from one famous professor of microbiology, Boris Wojcikowski. He was very famous in the former Yugoslavia in a big country. And uh, he invited me to be microbiologist. And uh, my dreams were to be maybe specialist of internal diseases or dermatologist or psychiatrist, I don't know what, because uh, I have different different view but i accepted this challenge and can you believe that first three months when i was in laboratory i was staying with my head behind between my head, uh, arms thinking what i am doing here <laughs> see my place here or not but after three months when i start going deeper and deeper in the microbiology when i make connection with people then I saw that uh, this is uh, my world. It doesn't matter that I'm a big uh, like a person and work with a so small microorganism that you cannot see. So uh, I became a secretary of my society as a young doctor on a specialization of microbiology. And when I finished my specialization, because I was very active, my society recognized me as a good uh, leader of the society and I was elected as a president of the society. So in microbiology, I accomplished uh, a lot of things. I became specialist of microbiology, master of science, PhD, full professor. I work with students. I have hundreds of students every session and I'm very proud of them. So microbiology is a special world mm. and uh, one more thing that uh, tell me this is very <laughs> funny that uh, can you believe that two things uh, all my students knows that louis pasteur was born on 27 of december and i was born on 27 of december but different year so maybe his spirit was bluetoothed into you at some point <laughs> Not the spirit, but this is some coincidence that uh, this is uh, very interesting and one thing that uh, during my beginning of the specialization <laughs> gave me courage to continue, there was uh, one serial of uh, movies uh, produced in Germany, Linux Schwarzwald, and the best person in the serial was a microbiologist. Mm. And they told me this is a good way to continue. You just mentioned that you had lots of students. How has it been teaching them during this pandemic? Has it been difficult or is it just a, a lot of Zoom calls with them or do you miss the contact with your students? Since March this year, everything is online. I and I believe all my students enjoy having uh, classes with me because I'm not talking only microbiology, I'm talking about other things to them to give some advices of life because they have to be not only people with the diploma, but they have to to work on their personality, yeah. on their view of life, to be good persons. And uh, really this is, I, I have uh, one group of two, 220 medical doctors following my lectures. It's a very big group and uh, several smaller groups. Uh, uh, and uh, it is not the same To, But uh, this is something that we can overcome the situation and uh, also we have uh, defending of diploma works or specialization work online, which is not the best way to go, but uh, this is uh, maximum we can do and uh, hopefully it will stop next year. Okay. Um, so just to sort of, yeah, bring us back to the conference, you're chairing the um, FEM session and short presentation by grantees at four o'clock on Saturday. What are you looking for in a good presentation from a grantee? Look, uh, this session is meant to be traditional session for every forthcoming FEMS conference on microbiology. 
because we want to emphasize how firms contribute to young scientists and to development of their career with different types of firms grants. We have now excellent presentations for this session, and this session will be just before the uh, after COVID-19 uh, mm -hmm. roundtable. They are all excellent, and they are not early career scientists anymore. Most of them are now, they have uh, scientific uh, titles, they have uh, teaching titles, and they are, they are very experienced, and uh, I'm very happy that PEMS uh, help them in development of their career. And I personally, me, I don't expect any answers to their uh, uh, research, but I would like to hear from them how was, what was the influence of PEMS support in their research and in their career development. And as well as, you know, chairing a session, you're actually going to be presenting your own research at 10 past five on Saturday. And so, yeah, the title is Metagenomic Insight into the Microbial Diversity of the Unique Laurendite Mine in Alcar. Can you tell us about this mine? It sounds very fascinating. Did you get to visit? Did you get to sample? What What's this place like? <laughs> Thank you very much for this question. Uh, this is really something fantastic. And uh, I would like to invite everyone uh, who follow this interview to join the session and follow my talk. Uh, because I give there more information and uh, we can talk about this maybe one week. Mm. This is the unique main man in the world, Alsha, because it is main, very ancient, with gold, arsenic, antimony and thallium deposits and a lot of minerals. Most important there is thallium. Thallium is uh, part of the mineral laurandite. This mineral exists in several, in several mines in the world, but the purest laurandite without any other elements or just small traces of few elements is in Alshar. And uh, in the main part of Alshar, estimates are that there are 500 tons of this thallium element. And what is interesting about thallium? Thallium, you cannot find uh, free thallium in the nature. There are a lot of isotopes, but uh, one isotope 203 and 205 can be found. Uh, but uh, what is the interesting that uh, from the sun, there are some particles named neutrinos. There are three types of neutrinos, but solar neutrinos from the sun, yeah. they go to the earth and uh, they when they in the contact with thallium thallium transfers to lead 205 mm. and you can scientists estimate with the concentration of this lead about about the so there uh, there is belief that they can uh, find the secret of the producing power of the sun and uh, the secrets of the universe and uh, that's uh, it was the reason that thallium was suggested as a geochemical detector of solar neutrinos mm -hmm. so now uh, there is a legend about this main uh, main deposit ore that alexander the great this is written in one book from a famous british writer christopher mcdonald he was talking about the secrets of the power of Alexander the Great because he believed in the power of stones, crystal, and talismans. And he used this uh, crystal, Laurandit, he's beautiful, <laughs> he's uh, like red color. Mm. Uh, he used this uh, for himself, for his favorite generals and soldiers. So I'm uh, very proud about uh, this, and uh, we make a research. I was in the tunnel uh, in, inside. It is very narrow. I couldn't go more than 30, 40 meters deep inside because uh, just small people can go there. And uh, in the collaboration with uh, Serbian uh, University, university, uh, we I took samples, then we extracted DNA in Belgrade, and we sent this uh, DNA to Visabio Valencia. And finally, we prepared a uh, fantastic, uh, actually fantastic, a uh, great uh, paper. And uh, I'm very proud and happy that this paper was published in a FEMS journal, very prestigious journal, FEMS Microbiology, Microbiology Ecology. Mm. 
And this was one of my dreams that I would like to publish sometime a paper in France journal. And I know it's happened. happened. Uh, I have a little image of uh, the Laurendite here. Uh, so it is this beautiful red color, isn't it? It's so lovely. Everyone who follow uh, my talk to get uh, more uh, information about this. It will be. Mm, okay. Well, I'll, uh, yeah, look out for this talk. I can't wait for the Saturday. Okay. So, I mean, obviously the background to this whole conference and this whole year has been the ongoing pandemic. And I wanted to ask from your perspective, how is this, what has this pandemic taught us about how the scientific community can respond to a crisis? Joseph, this is very complicated situation. In the beginning, I believe that it will be solved mm. very easily or in a short time. But as we see, situation is complicated. Microbiologists are on the first line of this, let's say, war. And they should be emphasized. Collaboration, I think, is uh, very in the highest level. And the uh, scientific community allowed, uh, for example, publishing all scientific uh, research and uh, everything what is connected uh, with some something new with COVID to be published uh, as soon as possible and we, to be available to all scientific community, scientific community. But uh, I think that there are still more questions mm. than answers. One of the reasons about this was that uh, we decided to organize COVID-19 pandemic roundtable. We invited uh, fantastic speakers, eight speakers, and we have a great moderator. And uh, I believe that maybe on Saturday, after these discussions, we will have answers to some uh, questions that we don't know yet. So we'll uh, wait and see on Saturday, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as the FEMS director for events and internationalization, I wanted to ask your opinion on how important is the international nature of science to its effectiveness and success? And what can we do to build and also defend international collaboration in this era of perhaps increasing nationalism and localism and protectionism? Yeah. How do we defend that international aspect to science? Look, uh, collaboration between scientists is on the first place. Most important is if they succeed to work independently, independently not disturbed by the politics. And uh, I am sure that the science community, they need support from politicians, from business, sector and so on, but they should make decisions themselves. This would be the best approach to solve uh, this uh, crisis. Always, if you look back in the history, big crisis in different area of the life force the science to have a big jumps. And uh, this is always uh, in the history when we have uh, some uh, great findings and developments in uh, this kind of situation. The problem now is uh, that a uh, lot of lives are gone. This is the problem. This is the main problem. And uh, I think that the science and scientific community should be on the first line and uh, all advice is uh, to be respected from from the society. I guess um, one of the ways that you know, you've helped to build you know, another aspect of FEMS's internationalization is by setting up our ambassador network. Um, we now have ambassadors in China, South Korea, Japan, America, and just recently we've announced two new ones in Canada and Australia. Um, so how can this network help FEMS and the microbiology community? And um, yeah, what, what should we all be doing with our ambassadors? How can they best help FEMS and the community? Look, this uh, project, which is not project, it's a life project uh, and developing project, is a great project. And to explain that, uh, we decided to have ambassadors in uh, for the beginning in uh, big uh, countries and big societies with, that are out of Europe. In Europe, we have uh, fans member societies and we have uh, fans delegates. So, as you mentioned, we have six ambassadors 
They are all very active. Three ambassadors are actively involved in this conference, two of them as uh, invited speakers, uh, Kenichi Yoshida from Japan and Lixin Zhang from China. They are invited speakers. Uh, Lixin Zhang is from China. And uh, we have Linda Kenney, FEMS ambassador from USA. She is... Uh, uh, she's, she's chairing uh, the COVID table. She will lead sharing the COVID-19 round table and also she provides us a fantastic speaker from United States. So uh, ambassador's role in a few words is to promote FEMS activities, to connect microbiologists of their societies with FEMS societies, to encourage their members to publish in FEMS journals, to attend congresses, conferences, to be joint affiliate members of FEMS and uh, also, I would like to mention that all of these uh, six ambassadors, ambassadors we have now, we will develop this uh, network next year for two more, I believe. They are all great scientists and fantastic personalities in the first place. And uh, so much expertise and experience coming with them, this is unbelievable. They are respected in their uh, societies and uh, I believe that this communication on the global level will be more intensive for the benefit of microbiology mm. and the benefit of and the actually they have been really great at you know helping us to meet new scientists in their regions and i yeah i hope that the, the program can expand over the next few years um this brings me to my final question for you Vaso. so you know hopefully looking to the future um next summer we might be planning to run the fem summer school for postdocs in some format um, so can you tell me a bit about what the plans are for this event and, you know, any information for potential candidates watching? I was at the previous one in person in Split and it was a wonderful event, amazing venue, so much great science, beautiful surroundings. Can we expect it to return next summer? What's the thinking at the moment? Joseph, uh, you were the witness uh, of the first mm, I was. summer school for postdocs. This is a fantastic project, and this is aimed to the most ambitious, great, young, early career scientists. We have a fantastic venue. It is the Mediterranean Institute of Life Sciences in Split, Croatia. And last year, we had the first summer school for postdocs. It was more than successful. We had extremely good program and fantastic mentors and speakers and uh, the feedback from all participants was more more than we even expected uh, so for this year we also prepared great program with different mentors and speakers everything was uh, ready to start and we had uh, we were in the process process of selecting uh, candidates but uh, unfortunately covid 19 also was the reason that we canceled this year and we will continue with the same program and same speakers next year. So this is a challenge for the most ambitious postdocs. This is the place there where they should spend uh, 10 days together with the mm. great scientists and their colleagues. So my suggestion to them will will be to follow fans website not only for uh, summer schools for every information they can find there they are all useful information but in terms of uh, summer school uh, we will announce that uh, maybe in a month or two and they should follow if they think uh, these topics are good for them i invite them to apply because uh, this situation is like that that we will have a lot of people uh, applying for this uh, exceptional and uh, it really was exceptional and i hope that i can attend again <laughs> this year and perhaps film you know more interviews with more people um because there were so many amazing scientists there and uh in terms of the topic i think you know if it's the same as the one we planned this year it's going to be microbial evolvability mechanisms resistance biology and strategies to defeat and detect antimicrobial resistance so a really interesting and useful topic for any young scientist and that brings me to the end of the questions I have for you. Is there anything else you'd like to say in a final, you know, final moments? I would say 
I, I enjoyed this interview with you. I would like to send a message to every all young scientists, early career scientists, to join the FEMS family. And thank you very much again for this uh, possibility to give this interview because there are some things that uh, I never. Well, thank you for joining me. It's been public. a great. Uh, session and good luck with all your speaking engagements later on. I hope they all go well and that uh, all your mics are unmuted. And uh, yeah, good luck, Vesta Conference. Thank you for organizing it. It's going to be a fantastic few days. And um, I'm sure we'll speak again in future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.